All right, so in this first real video in the series, I wanted to talk about strategy. And it might be a little boring, but I think it's important. Um, you're going to see tons of videos about out there just saying top five coins in 2018 or what to buy now, what's going to explode, what's going to make you a millionaire. And I think it's important to step back a minute and say, what are you really trying to do? Are you trying to pick something that's going to explode overnight Maybe it doesn't have real value. Maybe you don't care about the technology. Or are you going to pick something? This has, this is better. This, if, if my space is bad, this is Facebook and it's better because of this. Or are, are you picking a better coin or company because it's technically better or because you've heard more hype about it? So for me, I want to pick, and I didn't start this way. I, like a lot of people, I just picked what I heard, what people were talking about, and I was, for short-term games and it went up and down and it was very volatile and I really didn't trust it. It's hard to trust something when you're just picking something based on what people say. So for me, I'm more comfortable picking in long-term technical and unique companies and coins and technology. So a lot of the things I'm going to show are very are going to be more for long-term investing and relatively long-term. I know investing in the stock market, you're talking 10, 20 years and in this it might be one to two years, but one year in cryptocurrency feels like 10 years. So I'm looking for something that's different and unique and solves a real world purpose. And, and I'll get into that in my checklist when I'm picking out um, a different altcoin. And also before you get in, you have to understand this is very volatile. You have to be willing to see if you invest $100, it might be 50 the next day. And you're like, how did I just lose half my money overnight? And then it might go up to 200 and it's, it's going to go ups and downs and it's very risky. And I remember somebody saying, you know, you know, Mark Cuban or Warren Buffett saying, I wouldn't invest in Bitcoin at all. I wouldn't invest 1% into it. And that's Bitcoin's the safest out of all the cryptocurrencies. And you're talking about investing in one that's ranked 200 or something that just was created a week ago. So it's very risky. And I would definitely recommend only doing this with, you know, extra money. Don't be investing thinking you're going to, like if somebody said they mortgaged their house and put it in Bitcoin. Yeah, that's a bad idea. So just fool around with 10, 20 bucks at first, maybe a hundred. Make mistakes with less than a hundred dollars before you make a thousand dollar mistake. Um, next is you kind of have to enjoy it. You can't be doing it, hating it. You have to enjoy it because it's the ground floor. It's not step-by-step. Step. It's not an easy interface. It's not a couple clicks and you're fine. To do it, you have to kind of dive in and learn and enjoy it and learn researching and learn all about it and how to buy and exchange and save and store and do all these things. So you you have to kind of like it. The easy way is to just go on Coinbase, buy Bitcoin, say, leave it on there, and then cash out. You can do that, and a lot of people have made hundreds and thousands of percent doing that. So if you all, all you want to buy is Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash, those four are right on Coinbase. You can buy them directly with your credit card or bank account. You don't have to touch it. Just leave it on there, cash out. But there's plenty more out there, and there's plenty more you know, technology and companies out there that have a, a, a real future. Um, and I'll go over how I research coins a little bit later in a different video, but... I have a research kind of process and how I hear about it and what I do. And here's kind of a quick checklist of when I hear people saying, you know, this is a great idea, you should buy this one. And I'll say, is it unique? Is it different? If it's just a copy of a, a, a different coin that's already higher up, I, I, I think that's a bad thing. It has to show something that's unique. Does it serve a purpose? Bitcoin is a, is a digital store of money. That's what it does. Ethereum is a smart contract that, that has some information in there. And all these other companies and coins and tokens, they do some things a little bit differently. Like Monero is a digital store of currency, but it's, it's completely private. And it does it one thing really well. And people say it will always have its place. So that's something that serves a purpose. Where some of these other coins, they don't really do anything. Or they're not unique. So that's something I look at. I'll look at their website. I look at the employees that are doing it. Do they have any experience? 
How far along are they in the process? Ideally, you want to get in early, but I highly uh, I suggest do not invest in ICOs. From what I've done, ICOs are a bad idea. They come out, they immediately, people sell off, they drop by half. So if you're interested in it, watch it, wait for it to bottom out, and pick your time to get in. Don't tell, Don't let them tell you when you should get in. I go to their website, I'll read their white paper, I'll, I'll see if this company is in it for the long term, meaning a couple, you know, several years. Do they have a, a do they have a, a roadmap where they're showing some type of future and what they're trying to achieve and can they achieve it? You know, a lot of these companies promise the world and they just dwindle away. And I'll show you some history of reasons why you shouldn't stray too far out of the top 10 or 20. Um, and what, you know, saying you should invest when it's low. Yeah, but if everything's going up, you have that fear of missing out. So when is a good time to pick to buy in? And I know I've talked about long term, but you should also look, what is it going to do in the short term? Obviously, you're going to say, well, 10 years from now, it's going to be worth a lot. But it's hard when it you know, goes down by half overnight or something. So you, you do want get a little cushion in there. You want it to double fairly soon or go up somewhat. But like they say, is as long as you hold on to it, you haven't really lost anything. But ideally, you you sleep a lot better knowing you're you've kind of doubled your monies and you can cash out some of that. And I'll talk about all that strategy on when to cash out, when you should cash out, when you double, triple, take out a portion of it, get your original investment back. That's what I've done. So I've put in enough and I've cashed that original investment out. So you're playing with house money and you sleep a lot better that way. And then I'm not, like I said, these videos aren't going to be a lot of technical analysis on, uh, you know, trend lines and Fibonacci sequences and fractals and all that thing. People do that. And there's some websites you can look at like uh trading view where you can, and that's a good idea to get kind of an idea of what people are thinking, but I do like some trend lines and, and they do seem to, um, that's the one thing that I, I really do feel like it does make a, a point when you can see a, a trending coin or a point where volume and price and 30 day or 50 day trend lines are intersecting. And so we'll get into something like that very, um, broadly. We won't get into great detail again. Um, and like I said, it's very risky. Don't go all in and don't listen to what the masses are telling you. It's so easy when people are saying, buy this, buy this, buy this, it doubles. And they're like, see, I told you. And then you fear the next time. And one story that was a few months ago was there's a Chinese currency called cash. It starts with a Q and everyone's saying, this is can't miss. It's backed by the government. It's backed by banks. Get in now. Hurry up. It's at 80 cents. It's going to a dollar. Get in now. It's going to be listed on new exchanges. When it does, it's going to explode. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. That's what everyone was saying. And I'm like, oh, it's on a Chinese exchange. How do I do? Oh, I got to sign up. Oh, it's too late. You know what it did the next week? It went down to 50 cents. It went down 50%. Everybody, nobody was saying that. Everyone's saying it's going to do one thing, and it did the complete opposite. Now, since then, it's slowly gone up, and it's probably at $2 today. And you might be saying, yeah, they were right. You're too, it's not, you don't have to react quickly. I know people say, oh, you got to do this quickly, this quickly. If you're doing the right thing, it's better to stay calm. I've never made the right decision if I'm doing something quickly, if I'm racing to buy something or racing to sell. It's always been the bad, the wrong decision. So I've always made my best decisions calmly and slowly, and it hasn't worked out right away. It's taken some time. So yeah, maybe they were right buying it a dollar, but if you would have just waited and not, you know, had that fear of missing out and just waited, then it drops and you're like, oh, now I will calmly get in now, not when there's a big hype around it. And um, one strategy that I really believe in is how you're going to invest low, medium, and high risk. And these are all kind of in quotes when I say low risk. Again, I said how, you know, most investors think Bitcoin is high, high risk. And that's the safest out of all these. So when I say low risk, I'm talking Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are relatively, in this world, relatively low risk. Yeah, they might go down or up, but they're pretty solid and they're going to 
over the past many years, they've shown you know pretty solid gains. And I'm not talking you're not going to make a lot of gains. I think Bitcoin went up 700% last year. I think maybe more. I think it was 2,000% in 2017. It went from $500 to $20,000 or something like that. So by no means am I saying this is you know small gains. The strategy that I do is a 50, 30, 20, meaning 50% should be in that low risk because Bitcoin is different. You have to remember something that I've learned is Bitcoin is different from all the other currencies. It's a little less now. It used to be 50 or 60 or 70% of the market was in Bitcoin. Now it's at 30 or 40, but it still has the, the power when Bitcoin starts to take off, everything else drops. And when Bitcoin drops, everything else drops too. It's not how you would think it would be. You would think, well, it should be one or the other. When Bitcoin's really taken off, everybody jumps on board and all these other coins drop because they're cashing out and jumping on board Bitcoin. And it goes up and you might be in all these other altcoins doing nothing and you're watching Bitcoin go up and up and up. And then when Bitcoin crashes steeply, all the other altcoins crash too because they're linked. Bitcoin is the main trading pair. If you want to buy an altcoin, it's a little bit less now. You can buy with Ethereum and some other things, but Bitcoin's a mating trading pair and it's all related to Bitcoin, so they're going to crash too. So you're like, how can I win? The only way you can really win is at a time now when Bitcoin's going up or down. It's kind of holding steady or going up a little bit. That's when people are starting to get in all these other coins. But when Bitcoin takes off, a lot of people jump on board. And that's why you're kind of hedging your bet when you're in Bitcoin and altcoins. You might get those huge gains with the altcoins, but when Bitcoin takes off and these crash, you're going to have it, you're going to balance yourself out. And that happened to me when Bitcoin went from a few months ago, it went from, uh, you know, 5,000 to 20,000. Well, the altcoins hadn't really, they had done a whole lot before, but now it was Bitcoin going up and all the altcoins were kind of hanging out doing nothing. But because I had half and half, I was still making more because it was, they, these altcoins were staying level and Bitcoin was doubling every, you know, couple of months. So I was actually, I was making money. And then when Bitcoin kind of leveled off and all the altcoins took out, I dropped, I lost a little on Bitcoin, but then you made money on the altcoins. So I think that's a very safe way of hedging your bet. And I would say 50% should be in Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, the other 30%, you should stay in the top 20. And <clears throat> when I say in the top 20, a website that I like to use and is the most popular and most people like to use is uh, CoinMarketCap. And this website has a lot more information than you would think on the surface. It shows all your coins here. You can see Bitcoin. And it's, it's I'm not going to get... Uh, very deep into it. It has the market cap number here. That's Bitcoins. It has the price, which is meaningless. I'll get into that later. Don't look at Ripple and say, hey, this is only $2 and this is 1000 This is 13000 Man, I should buy Ripple now. You have to look at the market cap. If this had the same market cap as this, it would be worth 4 bucks. So the price has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the um, supply and market cap is the price or vice versa or price and uh, circulating and that's total supply and price is your market cap so don't look at the price you should be looking at market cap as an, as an idea of where it is in the the rankings and I'm gonna be getting into a lot of beginner mistakes and things like that and the one of the biggest ones I'll cover real quickly is people think they have to buy a whole Bitcoin and or a whole anything. Oh, I can't buy Bitcoin. It's thirteen thousand. You can buy three dollars of Bitcoin. You get point zero 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 zero, whatever. So I'll get into all those beginner mistakes and questions people have later. But I just wanted to go over this. And these are your top twenty right here, down to Ray Blocks, which has gone up two thousand percent the last few weeks. Um, and if if you're interested in finding more, like I said, you can look at market cap. The price, the volume, volume is important. That shows how much people are trading with it. You might find a great coin later, but if it doesn't have the volume, you're you're not gonna. I don't think it has the potential, and I'll get into that. Here's the 
all uh, the all time view it doesn't really go past 2013 there's a lot more information there you can sort by year show it by three months I usually um, just do price US dollars now again these are videos that are going to be very beginner based videos and I'm going to be talking US dollars um, as you get more experience some people like to talk in terms of Satoshi's that is in relation to Bitcoin a lot of people say you shouldn't if, if you bought a coin at a dollar and a year later it's at a dollar you're like well I haven't really lost anything but in terms of Satoshi's in terms of relation to Bitcoin you might have gone down five if Bitcoin goes up 500 percent you do nothing you've lost 500 percent in terms of Bitcoin and Satoshi is you know one unit of a Bitcoin to eight decimal places so I don't want to get in all technical that I'm fine working in US dollars but know that some people compare it to Bitcoin where if you're not increasing in Satoshi's you might as well just invest in Bitcoin because that's the be better way to go um, again there's the chart if you want to see markets is a big thing so many people say how what where can I buy that coin where is it traded on you come here you go to market these are all the exchanges that trade Bitcoin and their trading pairs and what the volume is being traded at so there's all these uh, great information on here but something I really wanted to go over quickly and I'll do this later and that's historical snapshot and if you go let's go back to let's go back two years January two years ago and this is why I wanted to talk about that 30 percent risk and while I'm at it let's talk about your other 20 percent where you can go wild and go out of the top 20 so I think you should be 50 percent Bitcoin Ethereum number one and two 30 percent maybe in the top 20 and your other 20 percent you can be in the top 100 or pick whatever long shot you want but I wanted to show you why I think that's important let's say you were watching this video or you decided to get into cryptocurrency two years ago January 2000 January 3rd 2016 and you're like bitcoins at four hundred dollars you know what I've already missed it like I said when it was at 200 I'm like ah, I don't want to buy it at 200 let's buy Ooh, I know I'll go down here and pick I'm gonna pick one of these other ones they're the ones that's really gonna explode and I'm gonna pick uh, you know get gems I've never heard of get gems I don't know what it's done but I'm guessing it's not done as well as Bitcoin has done in the past two years so you might have been thinking two years ago I'm gonna pick bitcoins already peaked I'm gonna pick one of these other ones down here that's really gonna be huge mega coin you know earth coin I've heard of you know where it's ranked it's probably ranked in the 300th position so just because these are down here don't think that they're gonna be the next Bitcoin two years ago because they weren't you know it was the Bitcoin two years ago Bitcoin now having said that some of these other ones mainly in the top 10 or 20 did make bigger gains than Bitcoin ripple was half of a, a penny two years ago right now it's worth two bucks so that's what four thousand percent maybe I'm wrong it's a lot and it's more than Bitcoin did Litecoin is at two hundred and fifty dollars today ethereum a dollar it's at twelve hundred so there are coins that you could pick Bitcoin ripple Litecoin ethereum dash perfect you could have picked any one of these and made huge gains two years ago but once you get out of there stellar would have worked factum did okay Monero you can still you'll still see on the top it's in the top 20 but some of these other ones Gridcoin, new shares Ruby coin they haven't done as well so once you get out of the top 10 or 20 I mean you can find some NEM one of the biggest gainers in the past two years down here at 25 but right next to it start coin never heard of it and it, it might have done okay it might have gone up a couple hundred percent but once you stray out of the top 10 you start really getting uh, risky and there's no guarantees that these are gonna go up too there was a lot of guarantees that these top 10 were gonna go up and now if you go historical snapshot let's go just a year ago I bet I'll recognize and if, if you don't know there's probably a lot more 
Again, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, Monero, Ethereum Classic, Dash, same ones. You didn't see one from out of nowhere pop up there. So it was better then, and I still think it somewhat better now. Just stay in that top 10. And still, you can see, it hadn't really done much. It doubled. 2016 wasn't a great year for all these cryptocurrencies. They didn't do much. That's right after it had dropped in 2013. It was still slowly building. Now, having said that, Bitcoin doubled, which if you were in any 401k and you went up 100%, that would have been huge. So, and Dash went from 2 to two to 12. So, there's still huge gains, but nothing like you saw in the year 2017 when everything went way, 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 way up. Again, Ethereum, $8. It's now $1,300. Now, if you want to, like I said, shoot for the moon and pick pick this crazy long shot that's going to go up some crazy percent, you can do it. My suggestion is to do it with a small amount and buy it and forget about it and don't touch it because the second, I, people always say the second you drop it is when it's going to do it. So just buy it and wait. Spend a, an amount of money that you're totally convinced you're throwing away. If it's $100, Say, I'm fully prepared to just throw this away, $100. And you might, it might go up to 1000 or 10000 or it might just sit there and do nothing or go away. Uh, something I wanted to show you was just a couple months ago. It was December 6th, 7th, and 8th of last year. And it was when Bitcoin broke through that $10,000 barrier. And it really took off to $13,000. And I remember Bitcoin was the only thing in the green that it that went up every other altcoin was red and that's what I'm talking about and it wasn't that it, everything was staying steady everything was dropping and that's what I mean you have to be have a balanced portfolio in terms of Bitcoin Ethereum and everything else and you can make these gains with these small market cap coins but do it with you know 10 20 percent of your money um, another good strategy on coin market cap is to sort by the 24-hour volume and that's going to show you where people are investing where things can move because if you're not getting that volume you're not going to get that big increase in price so it's great to look at all these other things but if you just go you know a trick that a lot of people do go to page two sort by volume and you can see I exec highest volume highest gains and you can Sometimes you can pick it out when it's people are building up to it. You can see again, all the, the volume is showing the big price increase. Not always. You might see a big price decrease of people cashing out. But it might be a good, you need that volume to get that short-term increase. So, And when you're investing a coin, you do want some volume. It shows that people are interested. You might see crazy gains, but it might be a very small volume and a percentage-wise. Um. And in terms of strategy, whenever you hear these stories about people saying, I, I made a million dollars investing or whatever, it's because they forgot they had it. Otherwise, they would have cashed it out. If you people said, oh, man, I wish I could have bought Bitcoin when it was $100. People did buy it when it was $100. And it went to 200 and they hit cash out, doubled my money, great. It's the people who forgot about it or, or thought more long term, not just thought, Oh, I went up 100%. Now it's in a bubble. It's at $200. It's in a bubble. Time to get out. So my advice is take out what you put in. When, when you double or triple, take out that original investment and then just be in it for the long term and hope you pick right. There's lots of stories of people doing day trading. And everything I've heard, day trading is a bad idea. For 99% of people getting into cryptocurrency, the best thing is to just buy it and hold it through all the dips don't think you're never going to pick the bottom or the top it's going to come down you're going to say i got to get out and then it's going to go up i got to get back in just buy it and hold it and pick a time to get out set yourself a target and uh, real quickly i'll do a, a video later but i have a spreadsheet that i use that i keep all my notes all my uh information and links and how i'm tracking everything um their prices what i i want to buy in at what they've done exchanges here's where I keep all my information and here's you know coins I bought what the keys are and I'll get into all that later whether you should keep it on here or password protected all the information about it so it's good to stay organized you can't just keep all this in your head so 
Just buy it, put it on there, watch it, don't touch it. That's the best strategy I could give you. And it's important to understand how people and most people in this area are new investors. Wall Street's just getting in, but it's important to understand how you know the average person will react. If Bitcoin goes down 40% tomorrow, they're going to say, crap, I better get my money out. And they are going to jump in and take their money out. Well, if you feel like it's got a future, that's when you should get in. For me, it's almost counterintuitive on you should be doing the opposite of what most people are thinking. The classic Warren Buffett thing is, you know, be fearful when everyone else is greedy and, and vice versa. And I think that story held true with the China information that came out a few months ago where they were banning exchanges and everyone panicked and got out. That would have been a great time to get in. That would have been, if you had not already been invested, they just said, now is a good time to get in. And it was because it hit a bottom and it took right back up and it only, it recovered in a couple weeks. Um, another thing is don't be impatient. Like I said, I've made every bad decision trying to be quick and buy something right away. Don't have a fear of missing out. Everyone has it. You read all these stories, buy this, buy this, buy this, and then something goes up. See, I told you, you, you get in now, hurry up, hurry up, get in now. You should buy it today. It's going to take off. And you're like, uh, it's already, it's too late. You can't react that fast. If you didn't get in early, just let it go. I had that with Ray blocks. I saw it go from a dollar to two to five. People said, get in. I'm like, nah, it's probably already peaked. And it went up to 30, but that's fine. I'm invested in other things. It might have a purpose and you could still get in now if you think it's going to go up, but I'm not going to go up when it's hitting all times highs. I'm going to wait for it to come down and stabilize a little or maybe dip and then get in. Um, again, you don't have to be right about everything. You don't have to, if just because something goes up a thousand percent, say, okay, great. I'm going to pick something else or I've already picked something else. You don't have to be right about everything. You probably don't even have to be right about half of the things you pick. Just be right about the big ones. Be right about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and one or two other. Maybe one of those risks, you, you pick three risky ones out of the, you know, in the top 100 and two, one works, and that covers your, your losses. So it's okay to pick some of these short-term games this year. It's 2018. It's still early. Um, but as time goes on, I think you should be picking more um, long-term coins with a real purpose. You can pick these, you know, Lunar and Solaris and they had, I, I remember reading them and Lunar was down there and I'm like, I don't know. And it's gone up several thousand percent. And I'm like, I should have done it. Well, you don't really know. It didn't really have a clear purpose, but even if I did invest, it would have been a small amount. And I'm more comfortable picking coins that have a clear roadmap and a clear, something that are unique. Like maybe you don't believe in basic attention token that they're using, you know, instead of advertisements. Maybe you don't believe in it, but it's something and they're doing something with it. They're not just a clone of another coin. Um, and like I said, you might not get those 500% gains overnight, but you want, the, I'm very much more comfortable in the steady climb. I, I'd rather just see it go up and up and up. I don't want to see this huge peak because that's followed by a huge dip and it's very volatile. I'm just happy with slowly going up. And that's what, you know, we saw with, uh, Ethereum do. It went way up, but it's just this past few months, it's just gone 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100. All these other ones are going up and down. It's just slowly going up, and that's just so comfortable, and it's nothing surprising. And I'll get into more, like I said, when you're picking coins, and like I said, picking why they're unique and what makes sense to you. Like I said, Monero works with anonymity. That makes sense to me. People don't want to be tracked. Walton or VeChain works with shipping. And I'm like, I can see how the blockchain and shipping will work. Basic attention token, online ads. Chainlink, which there's lots of different opinions about Chainlink. I really like it. I think it serves a purpose of connecting the blockchain to the real world. And that makes sense to me. I'm going to say there's banks here and there's credit cards and all these other things called AP, you know, using APIs and here's the blockchain. And that's, this is something that has the potential to connect them. So I like that idea. So whereas you're picking these other ones that people are telling you, ooh, hurry up and get in this one. Well, why? What does Lunar do? What does Solaris do? I don't know. I quickly looked at it, and you read some of the white paper, and you're like, I don't know what makes this. It, I'm not comfortable with it. And that's one big thing when you're investing. 
you sleep better when you know you've picked it might have, have gone down but if you say you know what I believe in it it has it makes sense to me and it checks all these boxes you, f- you feel a lot better when it does come up it you know you feel better as opposed to you bought it just because someone told you to and I'm not saying that those can't succeed um, they can just because they don't you you might not agree with them or you don't believe in them um, but like I said pick your own path pick your own what you want to pick like I said I like the idea of shipping shipping and blockchain makes sense to me and that's why I own Walton and VeChain those make sense to me how shipping will be tracked and coordinated using the blockchain or these other you know other digital stores of value cash and I'm um, like Bitcoin already does that so um Again, you want something that's got, if, if it's going to be out of the top, you know, 50 or 100, you want to see a lot of that volume to see those gains. So it's risky when you get out of the top 30. And if, uh, you know, you can do all these things and pick all these different coins. And some people say, I remember Mark Cuban said, diversification means you don't know anything. It means you're just scatter shotting out there. And there's a little bit of that. Um, and I, I think I did a little bit of that where somebody says, what about this? Oh, I'll buy that. What about this? I buy that. It means you haven't really committed to anything. And if somebody said to you, you have, you know, one choice to pick the one coin that's going to be worth something in the next two years, what would you pick? I'm guessing you wouldn't pick something out of the top 10. You'd probably be like, ah, Ethereum and maybe Ripple. They're working with banks. I'll pick them. You're not going to be like, I'm picking Solaris. They're just like Bitcoin, but a little bit different. No, they're going to eventually go away to zero. They're going to die out. You want to pick something that's unique. And maybe it'll be risky, like Chainlink's ranked 100. But I see something unique, and if they succeed, it has real potential. So you can take your risk with all of these other ones, but when it really comes down to what's the real you know, safe bet. And it's impossible to be right about all your picks. When you're in a bull run, everything's a winner. You're like, oh, this one's up 30. This one's up 20. Oh, this is great. When you're in a bear market and everything is going down, suddenly you're thinking, eh, why did I buy that one? Because somebody told me to. It might have been a bad idea. So there's lots of different strategies, and you have to find your own way by picking some and saying, do I really believe in that? Do I like it? Am I kind of am I comfortable in picking it? And you might start out buying all these different ones, but you'll eventually find, you know, five or six that you really believe in. Maybe some Bitcoin, some Ethereum, a couple in the top 20, and a couple risky ones. You're like, I'm fine with this. And you're not picking everything. Maybe each week you're picking up another one. Or not, sorry, each month maybe you pick up another one. And I'll get into good good ways to invest. And I really believe you shouldn't go all in right away. You should do... You know, average that money over time. If you want to get into Bitcoin, let's say you want to buy in $500, do $100 a month. And then you don't have to worry about picking the top. So we'll get into that in later videos. I know this one was probably boring, but I just wanted to get into a strategy and something to think about before you jump in. And maybe you can jump in and then think about this after you've reflected a little bit. But uh, so let's get into more exciting videos later on how to buy Bitcoin and trade it and really start doing things. All right, thanks. The following video is just one part from a series of videos I'm doing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies where I cover everything you need to know in a very beginner-friendly way. I've made lessons on everything from how to buy, how to use exchanges to buy other altcoins, how to store your private keys, which wallets to use, which altcoins to buy based on your short-term or long-term goals, a spreadsheet I made to track everything in real time, how to research different coins, and common beginner mistakes that everyone, including myself, has made or will make when they're just starting out. Some of these videos might be short where I quickly outline one type of process, while others will be longer and more in-depth where I walk you through every step along the way. For a list of all these videos, click on the link in the description for my cryptocurrency playlist. Thanks.